みなさんこんにちは。今日は TNT アンパクトエピソード6ようこそ。これはホストさんのたち、ジャスティン・カリモとレイシャル・アモア。今日はお話は日本で英語の教えることです。Translation: This is the best show ever. <laughs> We're talking to Anastasia Ramjag, aka Annie. Thank you so much, Annie, our guest today, <laughs> for that amazing introduction in Japanese. As you can probably guess, today we're talking about Japanese culture. We're speaking to Annie about her experience teaching English in Japan. We're going to get into what the steps were, just in case you're thinking of doing something similar,、um, what her experience was like, and what she thinks about Japanese culture and TNT, aka those anime people who are just、oh. all over the place. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Otaku culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought about you know, teaching English in Japan、mm-hmm. as well, but how does it work? I mean, if I don't speak Japanese, how does that work out? Well, the thing is, I went on the JET program, right? So that's the Japan Exchange and Teaching program, but it's not really an exchange program per se, even though it's called that in people. It's、um, they bring in foreigners from English speaking countries around the world. And even if you are not an English native speaker, as long as you have some、um, qualification, like a, a TOEFL or the IELTS exam qualification, saying you have a certain level of English, they will、um, take you in. They don't really send Japanese people to the country of exchange. So you apply if Japan has an agreement with your country. And luckily in Trinidad, we do have that agreement. So it's open for Trinidadians. So I got in, basically. Excellent. Can you tell us some more? Like, how long did it take? Was there an application fee? Like, do they pay for your flight? Like, what, what, are, what are the details? Just in case someone's thinking about doing it. Um, it's a really long process. It takes almost a year. So, applications normally open in October to November. So, they will open shortly for this year. It's a lot of paperwork. So, they'll ask you. It's all free, by the way. You can go to the embassy and get the application forms, or you can download them from the website. They ask you for things like birth certificates or、uh, proof of nationality. But you know, it's like almost like applying for a visa where,、yeah. where they ask you for all of these documents. Or you have to have a degree, so they'll need to see a copy of your degree. And then you wait. The first process ends maybe around February, March. They will send out emails saying whether you made the cut for interviews.、Right. And then you wait <laughs> for them to give you your interview date. I actually had mine in February, yeah. So I had applied in November. I got. Interviewed in February, and then I found out in April that I was shortlisted. So they won't tell you you get accepted, they'll tell you you passed the、yeah. second round. And in most cases, you will be placed. In some very rare cases,、uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will not be able to place a candidate. So then, you know, they get put kind of on a waiting list.、Right. But most candidates, once they pass the interview, they will be placed. And then you get your placements like in June. Yeah. yeah. So when you say placement, you mean at a school in Japan? At a school. Yeah. And when you said degree, you need a degree to apply. That's any degree or degree in English? Any degree. Okay. Yeah. That opens a lot of doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We wanted to talk about the journey actually getting to Japan.、Mm-hmm. Well, this was the first time you went there, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What airline did you take? What was it like? Give、so、us all the details. The embassy covers everything, right? right? Except your US visa because they have a deal with American Airlines. So. That is the cheapest route for them. That's the route that we flew. At the time, I didn't have a US visa, but the embassy wrote a sponsorship letter basically, not sponsorship in terms of <laughs> financial <laughs> aid,、yeah. but just please grant this person the visa for this purpose.、Mm-hmm. And then we got issued a very specific visa,、right. transit、mm-hmm. visa for the USA, and to participate on the JET program.、Mm-hmm. So we flew Port of Spain, Miami.、Um, we overnighted in Miami, but But we took about three hours to clear immigration. So by the time we got to the hotel, it was just sleep for two hours, wake up, go again. Miami to Houston, Houston to Tokyo.、Mm-hmm. In Tokyo, we had a three day training program,、uh, which I kind of slept through because of jet、oh, lag. Jet lag, jet program. t o u c h é How long does it take to fly from Houston to Tokyo? It was 17 hours and some change.、Mm. And I was in the middle、yeah. of a five seat.、Room. I don't think I could do it. I don't know how I did it.、Though. I understand there's a lot of turbulence as well. I wouldn't say that.、No? I think that depends, you know. It depends、mm. on weather, it depends on the routes, it also depends、right. on the captain's abilities. 
that makes sense. But 17 hours, that is so long. What that do you do? That's really long. You watch a lot of movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about whether or not you need to know Japanese to participate in this program. So it was the training program that you did. I know you kind of were sleeping, but did they teach you like... <laughs> What do you remember? Do from you the remember? Program? They taught you the basics. I mean, I can't imagine they send you into the school unprepared totally if you don't know the language. No. So in Tokyo, that training was just really general and it was more so about how to adapt techniques of teaching English. And then from there, you fly to where you got placed. So I was in Kobe City. From touchdown in Kobe, I went straight to the Board of Education and then they test your Japanese ability. If you had put it down in your application that you spoke it, then they will test you. And I did not very well on that test <laughs> after <laughs> studying it for three years at UE. Right. I got there and then they gave me the elementary test. In Japanese, they have three alphabets, right? And the one that looks like... Why? <laughs> what do you need three alphabets for? <laughs> so, okay, so there's kanji, the characters that look like Mandarin Chinese. Yeah. Um, they're really complicated mm -hmm. and have lots of strokes. That's the one I'm not good at. And that's the one I couldn't identify properly on the test. So they were like, all right, okay, you're going to get placed in the baby class. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's only if you if, so put if it you, down. If you don't do well on the test, do they... Chop your hair off like in the samurai <laughs> movies? No. Nah. Okay, no. just checking. It. It's not dishonorable. You don't need Japanese to go on a jet program. Yeah. You know, it's recommendable though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, were there people that you went with who didn't know any Japanese? Yeah, the majority of the group. <laughs> <laughs> um, that year that we went, we were 10. There were two Bajans and the rest of us were Trinis. At the time, it was the biggest group that had gone. Right. Just two of us had a some Japanese ability. So when you were in Japan teaching, were you mostly liming with the people in your group who were also teaching or did you make friends with local people? And Both. Think? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So what was that like? I think because in Kobe City, there's the biggest population of jets in all of Japan. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to live in that bubble and you can live very comfortably and uh, just have a great life within the bubble. Yeah. But then is that what you're really there for? I mean, yeah, yes, that's, that's your job and that's your work community but if have there, you really experienced yeah, the you country have the opportunity to experience yeah, it yeah exactly yeah. how long was the program um so you are contracted for one year initially and you can renew up to five years uh, i was there for two okay wow okay. um so okay linguistics is definitely a field if you're interested in teaching english in japan that's a great background to have but are there any other uh, fields that someone might be in that you might recommend you know what this is going to be a great experience for you even if you're not a, a linguistics buff um, I think once you're interested in traveling and learning about a, a new culture, it's for you. Because honestly, I met people with, who came from such a different background, you know, like some people had a degree in IT, some people had geography, you know, so really your, your first degree, it is, doesn't matter. You just need to have the avid interest to go. So when you went, do you think that most of the people who went, was it just to get closer to the heart of anime? Actually, no. No? Uh, in my experience, a lot of the people who went, they were in EFL, in, um, teaching English as a foreign language. Right. So either that or they just genuinely had an interest in Japanese culture outside of the anime. They thought, you know, okay, th here's this exotic country of the Orient. This is a great opportunity. Can you ask you, so they place you in this school. I'm really interested in this process because yeah. I might, I might go. So you go and they place you at this school. Do they organize your room and board? How is your salary in relation to your cost of living? Like, are you able to save mm -hmm. any money or is it just really to spend on your experience? The subsidy that you get for housing, that varies according to prefecture. In Kobe, they say that the chats are very spoiled. And um, mm -hmm. I really think so because the Board of Education was really wonderful. They spoon fed us everything. And I was only happy <laughs> to receive that because, I mean, when you go... At the time, I was too full of awe to appreciate everything that yeah. they did. But um, we got there and they had arranged... Previously, for the outgoing person from the school and from the apartment to contact us. In my case, my apartment predecessor, he emailed me and he said, all right, I'm selling all these things, but what would you like? So I told him, all right, please leave the bed, pots and pans, that kind of thing. Mm. And then when I got there, I paid somebody for it. And then my apartment, it was basically 
the Board of Education paid for part of it, and then I paid for the rest. Um, the cost of living is extremely high. I mean, Japan in general has one of the highest cost of living in the world, but the salary is more than enough. I'm just going to give you a perspective because I don't have qualms <laughs> of this. The salary at the time was 3,330,000 yen, kind of like 30,000 TT a month. Shit. And after they deduct all their taxes and like pension and stuff, which you get back, by the way, when you leave. So it's great because you just get this massive lump sum and you're like, wow, what did I do to earn this? But you forgot you'd been tax <laughs> yeah so you take home about three quarter basically it's really more than enough to live comfortably those living like in tokyo for instance or that region i think they would face uh, higher costs even but still with the salary it's really good i managed to save but i also wanted to do my master's so i had that in my mind like all right save towards master's oh yeah and you get amazing medical insurance as well yeah. do you get a car a car yeah um no mm. but you'd get a transport allowance okay. do you get like a sexy man to escort you everywhere <laughs> no but they're cafes much? you can go to rent them really? let's talk about that yeah. let's unpack that a little bit because yeah. i'm really curious i find japanese culture very strange and there seems to be a lot of latent sexuality yeah <laughs> you like can rent man? a sexy you can, man you can rent a man you can rent a boyfriend or you know a member of either sex for what ever you please is it prostitution it's not prostitution it happens you know it's illegal but mm. it happens you right. know but they have these places called host club but it's not prostitution mm. it's basically you're paying for a service yeah. so for instance i mean i've never rented someone <laughs> Nobody's judging you, nobody's judging you. But they line up, basically. Mm. And some of them do it on the street. That's why I'm familiar with it. If you like how somebody looks, you'd go inside. You'd say, all right, I want her to Uh serve me for tonight. And then a girl would come and she'd pour all your drinks and she would have a conversation with you and keep it going. But as long as you keep the drinks flowing, basically. That's the service. That's so interesting. So what was going through your head when you got off the plane and you were like walking around and you witnessed something like that? I just thought they had a really strange sense of fashion Mm -hmm. because uh, the guys, for instance, they had like blonde hair and it was really teased. So it was really high and um, kind of long. And then the girls, they'd be wearing almost like if they're going to a wedding, like th- those kind of dresses. And it's winter, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they seem fine. Yeah. They go all out mm-hmm. <laughs> to try and draw in people. I did not know you could rent people in Japan. It's amazing. Well, you rent a service. It's a service, sorry, sorry. Based on how somebody looks, you know. Well, since we're on the topic of that, um, talk to us about the vending machines that give you used teenage girls underway. Like, I don't how know does about, that work? But those. Like, mm. I also think that Western society, they zero in on one strange thing. Yeah. And they play it up a lot. It's a very niche market. Yeah, it's like not a representative of all of Japan. Yeah, I remember there was this one incident. Some licking doorknobs or eyeballs or something like that. Eyeballs, eyeballs, I saw it too. And somebody messaged me to ask me if this is true and, you know, people do that. And I'm like, what? what? (laughs) Yeah, apparently (laughs) there's like a lady who lives in the mountains. And (laughs) if you (laughs) have some ailment, you go visit her and she licks your eyeballs and you feel better. I would try. I, I've never experienced it. <laughs> it's not a thing, but the West makes it a thing and it makes Japan into this crazy, weird yeah. place. But I think it's going to sound strange if I say this, but it's just a normal country. Like yeah. people go through their routines, you know, they wake up, they brush Maybe teeth, they, yeah, they go to work and they work more than usual, mm-hmm. more than the average um, person. But it's not as strange as we think it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a different culture, yeah. but these strange things that get picked up on western media i think mm. uh-uh. so they kind of like single those things out just to make it yeah more it's like if people take jamaican daggering and they're like oh my god <laughs> jamaican <laughs> jamaican culture is so wild i feel like there's not enough daggering I don't know if that's Trinidad. a good analogy just because i feel like jamaica <laughs> do talk a lot <laughs> all right okay let's i'm talking about real like x games level daggering. like x games okay when they jump off the roof the trees and they do backflips <laughs> that's so <laughs> crazy all right we get off course we get off course we get off course we need more of it in Trinidad, i feel you need to stop. zen needs to have give me zen 51 or something needs to have like a zen, tree yes. You Clubs need to have <laughs> trees in the middle of them so you can climb the branches to jump off. Anyway, <laughs> talk to us a little bit about the Japanese man for all the ladies listening. What was that like? Again, I think that this varies according to individual. 
but they are what's, what's the word to use here <laughs> You know how sometimes you have to rake things out of men? They are not as expressive, you know, mm. or rather they withhold a lot of emotions. They're very stoic. More so, yes, but they do very romantic gestures in their own way. Like they would do something as simple as asking you out on a date. That is huge. Mm -hmm. in their minds. Japan is a very conservative society. You have to learn to read the social cues and they're a lot, lot, lot more subtle. So yeah, I think in that in that sense it's <laughs> it's it's difficult because you don't know if they're yeah. interested or not. So and like the majority of men that you interact with, they mm. were very reserved. I wouldn't say very reserved because mm -hmm. For starters, to interact with a foreigner, yeah. <laughs> that alone is, is a huge step for them, you know, because Japan is such a uniform society. Yeah. For a lot of them, uh, sometimes it's the first time they're just even seeing a foreigner. Is there a Japanese equivalent of a wet man? Yeah. Is there a name for it? Yeah, they're called Ikemen. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <Really? laughs> Ikemen? Yeah. What do they look like? What do they act like? Uh, well, it's basically a word that's given to any really handsome, sexually appealing, Player. attractive. Wait, that's what a wet man is? I mean, I I'm trying you, to I thought if you just drove a teeter, then that was it. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to find the equivalent, <laughs> you know, in a culture. Like a player. No. Is that a no? Don Juan? Wow. I mean, <laughs> they're so secret, I really never know. <laughs> did you try to visit North Korea during your time in Japan? No, I did not. I did go to South Korea. Though. Yeah? Yes. Wow. South Korea is like the Tobago of Japan because it's right there and the flight's cheap. <laughs> it's so fun. Like, I think South Koreans are just really open in comparison to certain countries in Asia. I love their style, I love their fashion, their music and their food. It's remarkable how different the cultures are even though they're so close together. It's kind of like a reminder of the West because yeah. people love to party and... Best vibe. Korean food in Trinidad, go. Hmm, okay. I feel like we have to go to Golden Mill because we worked near to Golden Mill. I actually want to say Sonata because even though it's a bit... <laughs> It's a bit more high-end than Golden Bell. Right. I think the taste is more authentic. Mm -hmm. And what Golden Bell does is, like, they kind of adjust some of the taste to suit the local palate. Yeah. So that lunch menu, like, I mean, yes, it's Korean, but it's, like, truly Korean, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but Sonata never really does that. They're like, no, you want to eat Korean, you're going to eat Korean. <laughs> you don't water it down for you. Yeah. They give it to you straight. Yeah. All right, all right. That's cool. Um, getting back to your work routine as mm -hmm. a teacher, what yeah. was the everyday experience in the classroom like? The JET sends you as an assistant language teacher. And if you're really lucky, sometimes you get to take charge of the curriculum and of the class. That only happened on occasion with me. So usually the Japanese teachers of English would make a lesson plan and I followed it strict, you know, to T, because they would write out, for instance, greeting two minutes next to it. And you do not go over ever. Like she would be timing it all the time, like, okay, Anna, thank you. Yeah, that's enough, you know. <laughs> next, we're gonna do this grammar part right. and so on and so forth. So when you're doing that greeting, are you just standing up in front of the class speaking English? Basically, yeah. Okay. Uh, the kids, what they do in junior high school is, as a teacher and as a class, they would stand up and then they go kyotsuke, like attention, re, which means bow. They bow to your teacher and then um, they say ohayou gozaimasu, well, good morning, so yeah. greeting. And then you as a teacher respond, everyone take your seat and then class will start. Yeah. How old are these kids? Um, so junior high, between 11 and 16. I also did elementary school once a week, so they were 6 to 11. You think you Super could get any 16-year-olds in China not to you bow think, to their teachers? When we greet each other, you could bow to me, or was that... You out? think you could fuck off? <laughs> 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 no, but I think, like, teenagers around the world are, are the same. A lot of them, because I'm... I'm small and like a lot of them were bigger than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they got confused and they thought I was their age and for some reason I'm just teaching them yeah. because I, I don't know. Are you, are you wow. allowed to like to beat them at all or no? No, you're not, not allowed really. to take disciplinary action in okay. any form. So you, you, you're not allowed to talk sternly to a student. Like if a student is being a troublemaker, you tell the Japanese teacher that's in the classroom and they will handle it. Again, it's something I think that varies according to what school you're at, what your relationship is like with the teachers and with the students. Yeah. So, I mean, I had a um, good relationship there so if I found a student wasn't paying attention and I would just say excuse me. Right, what are some of the touristy things that you can do in Japan? 
I visited this UNESCO World Heritage Site called Shirakawago. So it's basically like a fairy tale town. It was during winter. So they have these traditional um, Japanese farmhouses. So it's up in the mountains of Gifu. So that's the central island Honshu of Japan up in the north. It was my first experience with snow, actually. So it was really, really beautiful and really nice. I also just did a lot of eating. Like, it's a big part of the tourism there. When you watch the news in Japan, is it all anime on the news? Or? No. Okay, this is real people. A real people, <laughs> yeah. Back to an actual question. <laughs> so what about the everyday, ordinary local things? Like, what is nightlife like in Japan? It's very similar to here, actually. Uh, the clubbing scene is huge. Obviously, they don't really play soca, even though sometimes you hear, like, a random rupee, and you're like, what? Rupee is everywhere. Yeah, um, rupee is everywhere. People need to recognize rupee more. Um, It's, like, more like EDM kind of vibe. Um, Sometimes you get, like, dance hall and stuff as well, yeah. which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And people dress to the nines as well. Um, very strict dress codes for the clubs. Uh, there are lots of bars. But then the bars, for instance, in Trinidad, our bars are big, right? But over there, you can have like rel, hole in the wall kind of bars, but, but it's still vibes. Yeah. They have two extreme ends of the spectrum. You know, they work really, really hard, but yeah. they drink really, really hard as well. Well, Rochelle <laughs> and I, have, we've, we've given up alcohol, <clears throat> as we mentioned in the last episode, and we're still going strong. Really? Yeah. yeah. Or why? Um, People always ask us that, and they ask us that like really suspiciously, like, why? Mm. What happened? What horrible thing did you do that made you give up alcohol? We spoke to an Australian DJ a while back, and he was talking about how popular uh, soca music is all around the world. And we know you said there's not much of a soca scene in the clubs, but we hear that there are like actual like soca nights yeah. that you could go to. Did you ever go to any of those? Yeah, yeah. How was that? Very authentic. Really? And, um, you have girls that do choreography and uh, actually some of the dancers, they dance with Marshall. Really? And they choreograph some of his dances as well. And do you see a lot of Trinis there as well, like Caribbean people? Or is it mostly Japanese people into the culture? I'd say it's a mix, but don't really find a lot, a lot of Caribbean people there. Because, I mean, yes, you have the population, but it's still a minority. It's a know? small community. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Did you find that technology was more advanced in Japan? No. No? Really? No. That was really a surprise to me. Uh, At my school, for instance, uh, they (laughs) handed me a floppy disk one time. What? So, yeah, I think that it was interesting because, you know, they export this image of technology. And it's there. It is there. It's just that in certain areas, uh, and you don't even have to go that far into the suburbs, to see it, like the technology has not reached them at all. So when we see on television these, you know, amazing technological advances, are we talking like set heart of Tokyo more than anywhere else? Yes. Okay. What was the biggest cultural shock for you going to Japan? I think the conformity, you know, that whole idea of the nail that sticks out will be hammered down. Yeah. Um, in terms of just overall behavior, um, dress code how you speak how you look they are really by the rule book you know they're so disciplined one thing that really did shock me i remember like the first day that i got there and we would sign and all going through all this paperwork and they just give you a a form for the medical insurance i mentioned earlier and they ask you if you want to be an organ donor (laughs) And you just flew three days. Mm -hmm. You just went through this intense, like, drill and training, and you just came here. And then they're like, oh, by the way, in case you die, you know, like, (laughs) would you like to donate your eyeballs? Mm. I remember that being kind of... I think we don't have a culture in Toronto and Tobago at all of Mm. organ donor. Like, it's just not something that we're familiar with. So to go over there and to have something (laughs) in front of you, like you said, as soon as you get there must be shocking. But I feel like it's pretty much standard in different places. It is taboo, but it's important. It's did you have an eco baby while you were there? I did not. No? Because it's so expensive. How expensive is it? A thousand TT. The equivalent what? Of. Wow. Five or six um, pieces? Yeah. I did have Hida beef though, like second best to Kobe beef and it was absolutely melting your mouth like everything you hear that Kobe beef is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I imagine Kobe beef is 10 times better than that. A thousand dollars for a plate of beef? Come on. <laughs> Let's be real here. But you get sides with it. Yeah. Mm. But of course, th- that's not a main attraction. Like, you're paying for the beef, yeah. you know? What is the big thing about this beef? I'm not a beef eater, so I don't know, I don't know anything. Okay. Are you vegan? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. No. 
No. No, but please, somebody tell me what is the big thing about this comet <laughs> oh, beef? Well, they say that, like, the cows are basically, like, pampered and they get massages. They get massaged, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. These cows are better living better than me. Yeah, but then they basically. get killed. And well, <laughs> we all die basically. sometime, Justin. They enjoy life while it lasts. <laughs> yeah, so they say, like, the meat is really succulent. All right. What do you think people need to know about Japan? People who are thinking of visiting or teaching there, learning there? Mm. I think that you need to maintain an open mind and just because something is different from what you know doesn't mean that it's weird, you know? Like a lot of people, when they ask me about Japan, that's always an adjective that comes up. Weird. Yeah. But I think much like with, with any other culture, you know, you have to be respectful of what you don't know and be open to different ways of life. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Will you be checking out the cosplay market? No. Tr- okay. Are you against it? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's talk about the anime market. Mm-hmm. You're not interested in it. No, I am interested okay. in it. Um, I don't watch as much as I used to when I was younger. So we know that a lot of trainees like anime. A lot of people in general like anime. But how was your experience with anime in Japan? Um, I think that... So in Trinidad, it's really popular, but over there, it's a niche market. Mm-hmm. So And it's often looked down on, you know, like people will ask you, oh, okay, so you like anime, and then they give you that kind of look because it's not popular mm-hmm. as people think that that's the all-encompassing mm-hmm. Japanese culture. It's, it's really not. Do you think in a way they kind of are not against it, but maybe they're annoyed that people think that anime is Japan? Yeah, I think uh, that that's a big part of it in my experience. But yeah, anime growing up was a huge part of my exposure to Japanese culture. Um, I think called My Neighbor Totoro, which is from a Japanese animation studio called Studio Ghibli. It's very popular over there. I grew up on that, basically. And then waking up on a Saturday morning to watch Samurai X on TTT, 10 o'clock. It was like a religion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like for a lot of trainees, that would have been their first exposure to yeah. anime. Kenshi. Yeah? Yeah. So cosplay is all mm-hmm. about emulating the anime characters in real life. Is that what cosplay it's, is? It's costume playing. Okay. It's, just, it's like Halloween, except the, the characters are based on anime or video games. Mm. Yeah. But I've seen in, in recent times that they have extended it to like comic book characters yeah. and mm-hmm. movie characters. Oh, have you been to like anime? What is it called? <laughs> anime City and all that? Yeah. What is a weeaboo? A what? A weeaboo. <laughs> What's he, ta- what's he talking about? You can enlighten me. Uh, well, Mr. I don't even really know. All right, for my brief research online, <laughs> a weeaboo is somebody. Oh, Wikipedia. And this might be completely wrong, so mm-hmm. I apologize to anybody who actually knows what a weeaboo is. Uh-huh. But apparently, it's somebody who abandons their own culture mm. and tries to adopt Japanese culture, but they do it very poorly. Mm-hmm. Have you experienced this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us about, like, having been to Japan, you know, knowing the actual culture. How does this make you feel seeing people who want to adopt it, who don't really know anything about it? I think that it's uh, some form of what I call VS Naipaul syndrome, Mm -hmm. where you forget where you came from. Right. Mm. That was deep. I think that uh, the don't judge a book by its cover thing, it took on a whole different meaning for me over there because you really have to try to make your break you know right. but when you make it you make it but i guess patience excellent well annie you've spoken about a lot of things today i feel like i've been enlightened and i hope that the audience has as well your standard of enlightenment is quite low though so is it? it's not impressive but no i was also i learned a lot today um especially you know what people are losing their jobs by the droves and mm. so this might be a really great opportunity um if you're looking to make some cash and have a new experience and travel this is really great so thank you so much for teaching us about the jet program and about your experience in japan for all the anime fans out there you need to go get the real thing you know what i'm saying so go actually visit japan but no thank you so much and um hopefully for your next adventure we'll have you on again and hear about that one okay all right thanks for having me